welcome back to another episode of something I found cool on the internet, so I thought I would share it with everybody. I've been working on a project recently where I needed to create planets and moons and I needed to create a ton of them. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I make quick moons using a couple different free textures from this website, Solar System Scope. Dot com. I'll put the link to this in the description below. They have a bunch of really, really cool uh, textures of almost every planet in the, oh, I'm pretty sure every planet actually. They even have Earth, and this one is great. 8K textures for free, totally free. They have one of the stars, Milky Way, the sun, the moon, and all of these fake planets or fiction. I don't know what they mean about this. I think they're real planets, but they, I don't know. It doesn't matter. So the first thing you're going to do is download a couple of those textures. I choose the moony rocky ones we're going to need at least three different ones so the way this works is by taking two different textures and then using the third one to kind of manipulate how those two first ones interact it's not too complex uh, but there's a lot of steps so let's get started first you're going to open up blender and this is the default scene and i want to get rid of this default cube by clicking on it pressing x and d to delete it and then i'm going to go up to add mesh icosphere and with this little guy down here I'm going to just change the subdivisions up to like whatever. It gets too high around seven, so five or six. I'm gonna go with six because my computer can handle it just fine. And then I'm gonna zoom into it, select it, right click and click shade smooth. So that way it looks nice and you don't see all the faces. Next we have to unwrap this. So the easiest way to do that is to make sure that your ball is selected. Uh, make sure it's highlighted with this yellowish orange, hit tab and then U on your keyboard, and then sphere projection here. Click that, and then hit tab again to exit out of edit mode. Lastly, we're gonna switch into rendered view by hitting Z and mousing over rendered and releasing. Now I'll put us in rendered mode. From here, I wanna pull up this workspace. This is how I prefer to work. Pull up this space here and change this workspace from a timeline by clicking over here into a shader editor. And then I'm gonna click new. And what this is gonna do is give this ball a material. Now, deselecting both of these, I'm going to click the principal BSDF, hit X, and that way we can get rid of that. We don't actually need it for this. Next, I'm going to open up the folder where I saved those textures. I'm going to pull these in one by one and just drop them into the shader editor. Now go to add color mix RGB. I'm going to take two of these. I think I'm going to take the series, I think. Click on this yellow color dot here and drag it into color two. Move the Eris up, do the same thing, color into color one. Then with the mix RGB node, I'm gonna click the yellow color output and put it to the surface input of the material output node. A little complicated, but you get it. And right away we get this, right? And this factor is what's gonna decide between color one or color two. And whatever we plug into this factor is going to, you know, decide for us. And in order to get, you know, a really original piece, we can take this last texture that we imported, this image texture, we can click the color output yellow dots and drag it into the factor input. Now what that's done is use this texture to determine the mixing between these two bottom textures here. But I want to create a little bit more contrast with this, so I'm going to move this over. Go back to add converter color ramp, put that in, and then I'm just going to crank up the black and then crank down the white. What this is going to do is add a lot of contrast uh, to this image. Now, this looks mostly fine, except for one problem. When you see the zigzag line, that's because our UV that we unwrapped earlier is actually a square and we need it to be a rectangle. So, what we can do is down here in this bottom workspace, click this here, go to UV Editor, and you see how this is a rectangle? All right, well, if we go back up to this and we select our ball, we click Tab to go into Edit Mode again, click A to select all these nodes, you see how this is more of a shape of a square? What we need to do is to get it to the shape of this rectangle, and this rectangle is actually two squares right next to each other, so it's, you know, one by two. So the easiest way to do this is with everything selected in your mouse down here, make sure it's hovering over this workspace, click S and then X and two, and then hit enter. Now what that does is S tells it to scale, X tells it which axis to scale on, and then two tells it how much to scale it by. And we can just click out of this by clicking up here and then click 
tab to exit out of edit mode, and we no longer have that seam. Now the final part we need is to, down here in the shader editor area, go to add shader and diffuse BSDF, and just drop that right between these two. And that's gonna tell it how to interact with our light and the scene and everything, so it'll look a lot better. That already looks awesome. Now just to quick set this up into a space scene, I'm gonna go over to the world tab over here, the background color, click it and just drop that down to black. And in order to get a more realistic light, I'm gonna use the light up here and then click down here in the object data property and just click sun and that should change it to a sun. Your strength is probably way too high like mine, so I'm just gonna change to 10. Why 10? I don't know, it just seems to work. In order to really sell this effect, you might wanna go download a shader that this guy, what's his name? Christopher Fraser built. And I've been using this. It's like essential for what I've been building with this video project I've been doing. You can download it on Gumroad if you'd like. Uh, I'm gonna put a link to that below and a, a link to his YouTube tutorial teaching you how to use it. And it's really, really awesome. You should drop him a few bucks because it's a great, great tool that I use to make all these things. If you get it, it's just gonna replace this little node right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna put the node into the project and I'm gonna show you what it finally looks like. Anyway, that's it. I hope that you really enjoyed that. And if you'd like, all of these resources are in the description below, links to everything there. If you're so inclined, check out the website. You can uh, read the tutorial there if that works better for you. You can bookmark it so you can come back to it as a quick resource instead of scrolling through this video. Also, there's cool prints there if you'd like to print any of my pieces of artwork, um, look through the gallery or anything like that. I'd appreciate it. Vlog channel also linked below. Have a good day.